Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the arrival of a very beautiful bride? Okay, in a second. He can't wait. She laces on time. You can dry your eyes. Perfect shadows lie behind us. This is the day I make you mine. Can I have a little look? The way your hair lies. Sometimes I'm ready. All the way from the today on a train. There's nothing to say but this. Have a little kiss if you want to. Go on. You are. No, not you. <laughs> Here comes the sun that's with <laughs> oh, he's off already. It's quite sweet. Welcome to the Pilgrim's Rest Battle this Thursday, the 14th of September 2023, for the wedding celebration of David Poulton and Megan Tuddenham. Thank you, Chris, for accompanying Meg here today. Thank you, Alex, for being a brilliant bestie. And thanks to all of you for being such a top tier wedding crew. Many thanks also to Tristan. Can we have a big whoop yep. to him? <laughs> for playing so very beautifully. Could I ask you all to be seated? Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's absolutely bonza that you're here and we hope you have a ripper time. Fair dinkum for making it all the way from down under. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I will stop now. <laughs> I would like to extend a very warm welcome to Dave and Meg on this very special day where through their vows they will be making a public declaration of their love and commitment to one another. Their delight at having found each other and their joy in the little family they've created with Phoebe, their beloved Frenchie, at its heart. I'd like to welcome you to the Pilgrim's Rest, a very English country setting in which to host this wonderful day. I'd very much like to extend a great big warm welcome to all family and friends gathered here to witness and support Dave and Meg as they affirm their marriage vows. I know they are absolutely thrilled that you are able to be here. As those that are special to them, they thank you from the bottom of their hearts for making the effort to be with them today and helping them to make it a celebration they will never, ever forget. We've got locals from Bex Hill. Yes. Oh, Bex Hill, you let me down. We've got locals from Bex Hill. Thank you. The down from Londoners. And of course, a massive good day to the Aussie gang who have had to travel a very long way for a glass of fizz. Good on you guys. My name is Kate and it is both my pleasure and my very great privilege to lead you through the ceremony here today. You are here to share in the occasion as Meg and Dave pledge their true and lasting commitment to one another. And we're all here today to witness and celebrate this occasion with them. Having you all here with them will make the day more meaningful and provide you all with memories you can share together in the forthcoming years. Marriage joins two people who love each other and trust the love that they have found. It's a partnership in which each can grow to be their true self whilst enjoying the support of the other. It's a statement to all those around them of what the two of them already know, namely that they have found the trust, friendship, love and support of the other and would like to carry this with them through the rest of their lives together. 
Dave and Meg tell me they first made each other's acquaintance when living in student accommodation at Hertfordshire University. Meg lived three doors down from Dave, and I'm told that although there was a lot of passing on the stairs, he consistently ignored her. <laughs> anyway, his flatmates started hanging out with her flatmates, which meant he sort of started out hanging, hanging out with her. And then at a flat party, they got chatting and made a connection over Dave having an uncle who lived in Perth, who was also called Dave. <laughs> Dave also impressed Meg with the fact that he was studying quantum physics. Ooh! Which was weird because he wasn't studying quantum physics. He was studying automotive engineering. But what is really weird is that between quantum physics and automotive engineering, he thought quantum physics would be less nerdy. Anyway, the next day they added each other on Facebook and Meg spotted that they shared the same birthday. Not just the date, but the year too. But such is the shaky foundation of a relationship built on quantum physics-based lies <laughs> that she didn't actually believe him. And he had to show her his passport in order, <laughs> in order to convince her that they really are astrological twins. They continued to hang out and had each other over for home-cooked meals as Dave was pretty much surviving on chicken nuggets and Meg had a few more cooking skills down pat and Dave tells me their first official date was a trip to Staples, an office supply store, <laughs> to buy an ink pad. <laughs> Apparently, this was based more on practicality than romance as Dave was the only one who had a car. <laughs> Then their first dinner out involved Dave taking Meg in the dead of night to a pub in the middle of nowhere as they drove through the pitch black along tiny country lanes. Meg said there was more than a bit of the serial killer vibe about it <laughs> and she wasn't actually sure if she was going to make it back alive. <laughs> The pub turned out to be lovely, the Sunday roast was sublime, and not only did she live to tell the tale, but she is here today, ladies and gentlemen. Of course we know the course of true love does not always run smoothly, and Meg had only come to England for one year midway through her course. She was meant to be returning to Australia at the end of the summer and had not factored in finding her true love and soulmate. So, when uni finished for the summer, Dave worked the London Olympics and Meg went travelling in Europe with her brother, Kyle. And then much lovesick video calling ensued until Dave then came to join them for two weeks in Croatia. Talk about being a third wheel, Kyle, yeah. <laughs> then, finally, the summer drew to a close. The chill breeze of autumn blew across their threshold and Meg had to put on her crocs, pack up her cut lunch and head for the airport, where, I'm told, there was a lot of weeping before she finally made it onto the plane and back to Oz. Can I get an R? <laughs> Dave said once Meg had gone, he literally, this is so sad, <laughs> he literally didn't know it was possible to feel so terrible. Oh, Dave, my heart is literally breaking. There and then he knew he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her and never to have to say goodbye to her again. He managed to limp on until Christmas when he couldn't wait to get over to Oz and meet the family. Once in Oz, he experienced beach camping for the first time and almost didn't make it out alive after nearly boiling in 40 degree heat at Christmas. Crocodile Dundee, eat your heart out. Then the following February, Meg came back over to Europe with her parents and so she and Dave grabbed another short bit of time together. 
But before too long, Dave just couldn't take it anymore. He said, stuff this, gave up his university course, waved goodbye to Marmite and warm beer, and followed his heart with the incredible support of his mum, Tita, and stepdad, Tim, to move across the world. That was 10 years ago, and you haven't looked back since. You've added Phoebe the Frenchie into the mix and both admit that you're basically obsessed with her. Most of life revolves around walking the dog, grabbing coffee with the dog, heading to the beach with the dog, walking along the beach with the dog and discussing how gorgeous the dog is. <laughs> you love good food and nice cafes and restaurants feature highly on your to-do list. You share the cooking and Dave openly admits that he loves his cleaning regime. Regime. And although you both like to garden, Dave infamously also absolutely loves weeding. <laughs> You enjoy a good Netflix session, but can never decide on a TV show to watch together because Meg can't watch anything too violent, scary, or gruesome, and Dave can't handle another episode of endless replays of Paddington Bear. <laughs> You've traveled widely together around Australia and Europe and meet up with Dave's family in the Philippines or Meg's family four hours away in Geraldton. Did I say that right? Oh, good. <laughs> Family are important to you both, along with, of course, Phoebe, who, if it hadn't been for the long haul flight, would definitely have been here today. You tell me that you don't know what the magic ingredient is, but as soon as you found each other, you just clicked. You've matured together and you're basically each other's best friend. Meg is a free thinker, always coming up with crazy ideas, whereas Dave is more grounded and there with a reality check when needed. <laughs> but having said that, Meg's spontaneity has definitely brought Dave out of his shell and Dave's solidness has provided Meg with a welcome feeling of warmth, security and safety. You are two balancing parts of a pair and just love being each other's Sheila and Bruce. <laughs> Today is about recognising the bond you already share with each other and acknowledging that you want to stay together and support each other into the future, whatever that may bring. You found in each other happiness and fulfilment and, of course, love. And as a consequence, you now wish to affirm your relationship through the exchange of vows sincerely and faithfully kept. But before we move on to the main part of the ceremony, I would like to invite Gay, Meg's mum, forward with a specially chosen reading. Yes. Right. Not quite a reading, it's a poem. In battle's historic embrace, <coughs> they stand, Megan, from the land of sun-kissed sand. David, a Brit with a heart so grand, their love story, a fate so beautifully planned. From distant shores, their paths did meet in the UK, where two hearts took a seat. Born on the same day, their destiny, their destiny sweet. A love story is a, destined a connection complete. Megan, the Aussie with a spirit so free, David from Britain by her side, you'll see. Together, they ventured across land and sea, now with Phoebe their loyal companion, their family tree. As they say, I do understand so why. Two souls together, forever to ride. In laughter and love, side by side, their journey of love in each other's stride. A path of devotion, so strong and brave, in battle's town, their love they engrave. May your days be filled with joy and cheer as you journey through life, year by year. With love as your guide, there's nothing to fear. Megan and David, your love story's here. Oh. oh, that was absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. It was Dave who finally popped the question, having already told Meg's dad, who was, I hear, over the moon. Dave decided the perfect time for his proposal was after Meg had been at hospital working an 18-hour overnight shift. <laughs> She'd spent 
the day on the couch and was still tired and grumpy by the time he got home, but he ploughed on, suggesting that they go to the beach together. Despite really not wanting to, Meg felt bad as Dave seemed so ridiculously keen. So she capitulated and agreed to go. She got as far as the beach and plonked herself down on a sand dune to watch the sunset. Still, he kept pestering her to go for a walk, trying to coax her down to the sea with the promise of sea glass. But she was having none of it and just walked the next few steps to the next sand dune where she plonked herself down again. Realising this was as romantic it was as it was going to get, Dave got down on one knee and with the dog running round like a maniac with another dog's ball, he asked Meg to marry him. And did she say yes, ladies and gentlemen? Yes! Of course she did! And she cheered right up too! <laughs> Two days later, they celebrated their joint 30th birthday engagement with family and friends and a boat trip to the Alboros Islands. Did I say that right? Oh, they went somewhere on a boat. I don't know where. And Dave learned that in future, he should not plan romantic gestures after an 18-hour night shift. Dave, come on. You hold the same values in life, have the same vision for the future you want, and you bring out the best in each other. You're both happy to go with the flow and you make each other laugh a lot every day, which to be honest sounds like a fabulous foundation on which to build a marriage. And so today, Dave and Meg, you are committing to a partnership of love, trust and understanding in which you will care for and support each other, in which you will share all the joys that life brings, but in times of adversity or sorrow, you will comfort each other and lend each other your strength. When I asked Dave and Meg to describe each other in three words, Dave said Meg was cute, adorable and nurturing and makes him feel wanted. And Meg said Dave was ambitious, gentle, humble and thoughtful. She also said he's obsessed with cars. <laughs> to an unhealthy degree, but she admitted that that was a small price to pay for such an all-round lovely chap. Dave and Meg, this is the time you have chosen to continue to affirm your commitment to one another as husband and wife. Are you ready to make your vows? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. Right. Would you like to stand here, face each other? That's it. If you take a step back this way, Dave. Oh, there we go. That's it. There we are. You can hold hands. It's all right. <laughs> Dave, will you please answer I will to the following. Will you, Dave, keep Meg as your favourite person? To laugh with her, go on adventures with her, support her through life's tough moments, be proud of her, grow old with her, and find new reasons to love her every day. I do. I will. <laughs> Anything affirmative will do, it's fine. <laughs> And Meg, will you, Meg, keep Dave as your favourite person to laugh with him, go on adventures with him, support him through life's tough moments, be proud of him, grow old with him and find new reasons to love him every day? I will. <laughs> Dave, if you could repeat after me. Meg, you are my love. Meg, you are my love. My best friend. My best friend. And the light at the end of every tunnel. And the light at the end of every tunnel. You have seen me at my best. You've seen me at my best. And at my very worst. And at my very worst. And support me through thick and thin. And support me through thick and thin. Thank you for our yesterdays. Thank you for our yesterdays. And here's to all our tomorrows. And here's to all our tomorrows. And Meg. Dave, you are my love. Dave, you are my love. My best friend. My best friend. And the light at the end of every tunnel. And the light at the end of every tunnel. You've seen me at my best. You've seen me at my best. And at my very worst. And at my very worst. And support me through thick and thin. And support me through thick and thin. Thank you for our yesterdays. Thank you for our yesterdays. And here's to all our tomorrows. And here's to all our tomorrows. 
Now, the ancient and traditional way of sealing a marriage contract is by the giving and receiving of rings. And Meg and Dave have chosen to mark their commitment to each other in this manner with an outward symbol of the vows they've made to each other here today. In giving and receiving these rings, you acknowledge that your lives are joined in one unbroken circle. Alex, it's your moment to shine. <laughs> just stand here, my darling. Right, if you'd like to take the ring that you have for Meg. Alex, just stay there. Thank you. If you'd like to put that third finger left hand end of, just hold it there and repeat after me. Meg, I give you this ring. Meg, I give you this ring. As a symbol of the promises. As a symbol of the promises. I have made to you. I have made to you. May you wear it with love. May you wear it with love. Now and always. Now and always. And can we get that ring on that finger, please? Ah, mate, beautiful. Right, <laughs> that one. There we go. Alex, you may be seated. Big round of applause. Fabulous yeah. ring bearing. Third finger, left hand end of. Just hold it there and repeat after me. Dave, I give you this ring. Dave, I give you this ring. As a symbol of the promises. As a symbol of the promise. I have made to you. I have made to you. May you wear it with love. May you wear it with love. Now and always. Now and always. Would you like to get that ring on that finger? Fabulous. And now it's my favourite bit, ladies and gentlemen, because Dave and Meg have written their own vows that they would like to share with us. Who would like to go first? You go first. <coughs> <laughs> oh, okay. that's a good start. Diplomacy <laughs> in a marriage. Excellent. Well done. Meg, 11 years ago at Hertfordshire University, I fell in love with you. I fell in love with you not because I thought you were beautiful or because of our late night deep conversations, but because you never has hesitated to fall in love with me. There has never been a day gone by that doesn't feel like I'm with exactly the right person and exactly where I'm supposed to be. You are the most caring, compassionate, selfless person I know. Similar to how your dad describes you, mum. Meg, you are for others. <laughs> I promise to fall for you again and again each day. To have random tiny little dances with you in the kitchen. To be indecisive with you and to make adventures but to also be someone who is worthy of your love. Oh. All right. Just, just reference your ring. Dave, <laughs> you first made my heart skip a beat 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> your driving. <laughs> Since then, in the time we have spent together, you have shared with me a love that is both wholesome and unconditional. Your quick-witted humour will always get a giggle out of me. You somehow turn me into a car spotting obsessor and you always go out of your way to make sure I'm always happy. It's these small things and more, or your quirks and features, that make you shine so brightly. Thank you for embracing all the parts that make me, me, with all the stuff I bang on about every day. <laughs> and thank you for choosing to spend your life with me, away from your loved family and friends in Australia. We both know how indecisive I can be, <laughs> but one thing I know with complete certainty is you're the one person I want to spend the rest of my life with. I'm excited for a lifetime with you, filled with joy, growth, support, and my constant mispronunciation of common words, and my never-ending nicknames for you. <laughs> I know you'll still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to respect, admire, and appreciate you for who you are, as well as the person you wish to become, including your car obsession. <laughs> I promise I'll always, always drag you out for adventures and I'll always need more French Bulldogs. You've endured many hot, suffering Australian summers. You're forever waiting for me and you're always reaching the tall objects. 
but I think it's been worth the sweat. <laughs> Forever will not be enough, but from this day forward, one of my favourite days so far, I promise to make the most and love each of our days together. Love you. <laughs> I'll have a little clip. Go on. So, ladies and gentlemen, having metaphorically tied the knot, they are now literally going to tie the knot. Yes, it is that kind of wedding. Right, if you'd like to put your arms together like that, and if you would like to take that, now, do not let go. It's 52p a metre from Dunelm, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're interested. Uh, it's a bit like Paul Daniels, but not quite as good. Young people and Australians won't even know who he is, so... Slightly pointless, but never mind. <laughs> right, we're going to count them down. We're going to say three, two, one. You ready? And you're going to pull slowly apart now, OK? Three, three two, two, one. one. <laughs> <laughs> and now, give kisses to the missus! <laughs> Did you get that, photographer? Would you two like to just take a seat there for a moment? Ladies and gentlemen, we just have a slight pause in proceedings whilst we sign the certificate. So just chat amongst yourselves. And I think Tristan's going to be playing something beautiful for us all. And if I could ask Gay and Tita to come forward as witnesses in a moment, that would be brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> You come to me, come to me while you come. To me. Oh my god, it's shit's free! <laughs> He's meant to be on the right because his sword arm's meant to be free, but I think because it's battle, you're probably all right. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. I'm not expecting any Normans any <laughs> moment. Today you have affirmed your marriage contract. I hope this day will form a milestone in your lives and you look back upon it with love and happiness as a start of a new phase in your life together. I would like to offer you my warmest congratulations and wish you a very long and happy life together. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that just about concludes my part in the ceremony here today. But your part is only just beginning. So please, can I ask you to ensure that Meg and Dave have a wonderful celebration and a day they will never, ever forget. And with a whoop, a holler and a cheer, greet of Mr and Mrs Poulton! <laughs>